Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Talking Crazy 88. Back again for another chapter of the Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman by Shaharazad Ali. Chapter 4 The Wedding, The Beginning. Ah, who can forget the beginning? That wonderful start, start up time referred to as the courtship and going together. This is the period when the black woman is the most cooperative and malleable. It's that wonderful gl and glorious state when tender loving attraction is at its peak. During this time, the black man and the black woman cannot stay apart. It is too painful to be away from each other for an extended period of time. Every touch is magic, every glance ecstasy, and the delicious exploration of sex is brand new. Spine tingling in excitement, overwhelming enjoyment. How could it ever end? The fondling, the anticipation, the perpetuating desire of new love. The black woman stares into the admiring eyes of the black man and reflects his loving gaze with worshipping innocence. Her eyes give the temporary and false promise that she will always remain in submission and feel lucky to have her man's love. She is agreeable complimentary, affectionate, and giving. Nothing is too good for her man during this period. Life and love are sterling pure. Magnetic attraction is in force and neither side is able to withstand the pull because they created it. More lies are told during this stage than, than will ever be told again. The black woman spares no expense or energy to convince the black man that she is the mate for him. Naturally, he believes her because he wants to. She makes him feel like a king. She is alluring and soothing. During a lengthy courtship, she is available and willing to try anything the black man suggests. She is thoughtful in sending him cards or, or little love notes taking time to do special little favors for him. His favorite meal, his favorite color, his favorite treatment, expressed using her favorite plot. Her flexible and happy behavior turns out to be a gross misrepresentation of how she really is. After the point when she feels confident she has the man, she starts to take, kind, she starts to take a kind inventory. She memorized and cataloged all of her man's little idiosyncrasies that she plans to change. She believes she will be able to change the black man by subtle prodding and sweet requests. Sometimes these changes are monumental rearrangements of his personality that he has had all of his life. Nevertheless, she thinks that he can change and she does not doubt that she is the one to change him. The black man knows nothing about this plan and believes that she accepts him as he is, just as he accept, accepted her. It may, take a, it may take quite a while for the initial passionate attraction to subside and its fun-filled time of dating dinners, travels, calls, and uninhibited sexual play. The black man thinks that her attentions and interest will last indefinitely. The black woman knows that they will not. She weans him slowly using excuses and justifiable sounding explanations. When the black woman becomes busy with normal life activities, the first thing she gives up eliminates or sacrifices is loving attention to the black man. She believes that after she gets him, he is expendable 
and adult and should understand when she has more pressing things to do. If anything has to be squeezed in, it's him. If anything ha has to be squeezed out, it is also him. Instead of his care being paramount, it becomes something the black woman does on the run. While it is natural, while it is a natural occurrence for work, the house and the children to take up a certain amount of time. It is not a natural occurrence for the loving attention to the black man to stop. The time may become shorter to express it, but it should not become more infrequent. If the black woman develops given giving attention to the black man as part of her daily living, it would pre preserve the thrill of the relationship and establish closeness, not always based on sexual intimacy. It is not that she necessarily takes him for granted. It is just that she does not place the right value on his presence. In some homes, he walks into the house and is completely ignored. He is often made to feel like an intruder in his own household. Someone who is sometimes in the way. In the way of other things and people who are more important to the black woman than the black man. In younger women, the courtship may be altered a bit in thematic arrangements. If she has ideas about having some female macho equality, she might start out from the beginning letting the black man know that she has no intentions of catering to his every whim, or as his whims, or I'm sorry, or, or any of his whims. She doesn't think it's her responsibility, and she thinks that every man should do for himself like she does for herself. She has very prolific sounding explanations about why she feels the way she does. Take it or leave it. He should leave it. She does not feel that her attitude will have, an in, have impact on the success of the relationship. She is just exercising her options and believes her choices to be minor and harmless. She is interested in having a black man, but not interested enough to put any special act for him. Certainly, no encores or repeat performances. The wedding ceremony. For the contemporary black woman, big, expensive, elaborate weddings are in. Their requirements are a big ceremony, Big church, big reception, big expensive wedding, big floral arrangements, big catered menu, big matching wardrobes from the attendants, big honeymoon, big ego production, and big cast expenditures. But this is the black woman's shining hour. She is the center of, t of attention, the star. And her wedding is the public symbol of her wonderful life waiting ahead. It is a glorious tribute to her big acknowledgement that I got him. The black man cooperates and participates in all of this hoopla because he is prompted by both families and mostly because he wants to please his woman. She not, she not only wants it, she demands it. Although his nature may tell him that this is too much money to spend on publicly agreeing in front of several hundred wit witnesses that they are now married. Sometimes $5,000 to $50,000 or more is spent on the wedding affair and a lot of this money comes out of the black man's pocket. Gone are the days when the women foots the bill, bill for the entire wedding. The black woman is not concerned with the financial strain, will beg, borrow, and charge to produce this show. Later on, when viewing the videotape of this main event, 
it may be difficult for the black man to believe that his woman could orchestrate such a synchronized attraction, but now finds it impossible to get dinner on the table every night at a reasonable time. Sometimes the women may look at the tape over and over again, remembering that she may describe as the most beautiful period in her life. Sometimes the man gets lost in the shuffle of the wedding plans and finds himself standing around trying to figure out his part in this. Usually several family fights and disagreements occur on both sides before the grand day takes place. They rumble. After the honeymoon, the couple returns home to start living out the black woman's dream of married life. She immediately takes on the rest of the job of trying to set her life in order. It is also at this time she completely relaxes and let the black man know bit by bit that she expects him to carry his part of the load and make a few changes. Now that they are really married. Now comes the real deal. Few black women cross the threshold of marriage without carefully outlined mental plan of how she intends to change her man to suit her wishes. She sees marriage as the contract whereby she can be herself, the wrong self. She believes that the only way to maintain control of her life is to maintain control of her man. This control starts by trying to keep up with him, to know his whereabouts at all times. Often she'll ask questions about where he's been and then sneakingly ask him the same question at another time to see if he'll give the same response. One of the worst mistakes the black man can make when living with a black woman is to start telling her every step he takes when he's not with her. The first time she tricks him into answering, she will expect an explanation from then on. The reasons she uses to pry into his comings and goings are, number one, I worry about you. You could at least call. Number two, you ask me where I go. Number three, because I have a right to know I'm your wife or woman. Number four, somebody was looking for you. Number five, so I'll know what's going on or what's happening. Number six, because I, I just want to know. Certainly, if the black man desires to inform the black woman of his whereabouts, he can do so. But the problem in trying to comply with her slanted curiosity, which is really interrogation, is that the black man can never be sure of which point in the de deposition he will give the wrong answer and put her in a mental hell that may last for days. Her questions re represent distrust and insecurity. She spends a lot of time during the, her day thinking up ways to bust the black man and she will worry over any unsettled details. And could the atmosphere with susp suspicion and doubt the two most baneful emotions in her, her relationship. Although she won't admit it, her position is that if you ain't with me or a crowd of witnesses, then you must be doing something wrong. Or, if you ain't with me, then you must be with somebody else. Or, how, can I, how come you can't tell me where you were? She does not really believe that what she doesn't know can hurt her. Everything hurts her. And she thinks it's the black man's fault. If the black woman could, would take a moment to be truthful and admit her fears and the root of her despair, she would have, a, have better communications with the black man. And honestly is what I'm sorry. And honesty is what she says she wants.
but she only wants it from one side, his. She is so angry with the black man that she does not want him to have the glorious experience of having a good woman. A good woman. The kind of woman who is in submission to her man and loves it. The kind of woman who obeys because she wants to obey and not because she is forced into doing so. The current black woman denies any notions of yearning to be under the black man's control. She pushes this idea out with her, of her mind by recalling that he doesn't deserve it anyway. Why? Because he will not do what she wants him to do. She does not know the luxury of relaxing and living with her life for her black man and doing everything she can to make him happy. By letting the black man be the head of the family, she could revive him. And by getting behind him and supporting him, he could be free. The black woman cannot know freedom until the black man does. The wise say a man can rise no higher than his woman until the black woman makes a conscious choice to start respecting the black man he will remain in his current condition and decline even more some black women say they are satisfied with the status quo of their relationships and wouldn't have it any other way they are lying they are just trifling and enjoy quibbling and use these tactics to delay the inevitable for as long as possible. When the black woman accepts her rightful place as queen of the universe and mother of civilization, the black man will regenerate his powers that have been lost to him for over 400 years directly. The black woman should not mimic the ideas and attitudes of Western civilization. The white man clearly understands that the pre preservation of the family order is what allows him to rule the world. This fact is not hitting knowledge. When the standards that preserve civilization are disregarded, the result is a do-your-own-thing reckless and disor disorganized existence. The domestic crime rate in America bears witness to the breakdown of the family structure and the demise of the traditional values that preserve peace between women and men. The ceremony. There, there have arisen endless creative expressions of how to exchange the wedding vows, and many are quite interesting. But the standard theme contains the standard American design format. Little does the black woman know the entire wedding ceremony was taken from the white man's history of being in the cave, which is referred to as prehistoric times. It was out of the caveman period that they devised the marriage rites and each segment of the ceremony denotes a particular aspect of their life in the cave. It has no black cultural background in it. Most have seen the pictures of the white cavemen walking with a club over his shoulder, dragging the white woman behind him. This picture is the brunt of many jokes suggesting that this is how the white man claimed his woman. The following def definition explains how they came to the seemingly timeless marital rights. The ring is symbolic of the rope cord or vine used to tie up the woman, the bride, in order to conquer her. And it was used to bind her wrists and ankles while kidnapping her from her tribe. This was done by the groom, the ring bearer. It is the man who went with the groom to steal the bride. He is the one who carried the extra rope. It took two to three men to pull this heist, the attendants. The best man was the man who went with the groom to steal the bride. The throwing of rice. 
is, is symbolic of the rocks and stones the family of the bride threw after the groom when the bride screams awaking wakened her family and they saw she was being taken. The honeymoon is symbolic of the cooling off period that followed the taking of the bride. The groom would take her up to the, into the mountains or some far off place and keep her up there until she came into submission to him. Carrying over the threshold, symbolic of the groom carrying the bride into his cave, her new home. He had to carry her because she would not walk in voluntarily. <laughs> the maiden of honor is the woman in the groom's tribe, who usually his mother or friend, who helped the new bride adjust to and learn the ways of the life in the new cave. The veil came into practice around 1500 as a form of spirituality which was designed to keep evil spirits away from the face of the bride. The bride used to throw her garter around her thigh, also symbolic of the rope ring used to bound her when kidnapped. But white men used to create such a brawl at the wedding, scuffling for the garter, that this practice was dropped, and the bride took the throne of the bouquet to the wo women who were more civilized in their participation. Few black women know what they're doing when they plan and host a big church wedding. She doesn't care. She should take the time and use her own history to have a wedding ceremony and make up her own vows. With all the black man woman's profoundaries about what marriage means, it is, an, it is just an agreement between a man and woman to be together and work in the interest of one. It is a commitment concerning, the, concerning daily living between both families. The idea of separating, moving away, cleaving to each other is not an idea from the history of blacks. Blacks used to marry, set up housekeeping, or expand their present households into a larger base. Complete separation was not necessary since the tribe continued to work together for success in having food, clothing, shelter. Family ties were very strong and it was not necessary for the man and the woman to give up e either of their families just so they could be together. The extended family ties were kept intact. This also allowed the elder women in the tribe to help guide and assist the wife in adhering to the responsibilities of marriage. Today's black women, woman does not want nor seek guidance about how to practice wifedom. She wants the separation so she could have the freedom to run her house any way she pleases, right or wrong. She rarely takes instruction about how to do this. She relies on the various electronic and paper media to guide her along the marriage trail. When she reaches bumps in the road, she seeks out the advice of her peers who, is, who are also failing at the job of being a good black woman to a black man. When in, when in a dead heat about getting married, the black woman may feel the black vibrations of bursting surges of love for her man. A love she intends to carry balanced on top of her head encased in, the sheer, in a thin sheer of sheet of glass. A love that will shatter and collapse at the slightest quiver. When the black woman commences to anticipate marriage, she may make a widespread changes which are a trick. All of a sudden she may get real wifey. She will cook homemade meals, clean the house a lot, and perform any other feat designed to impress the black man in recognizing her as a good woman who can perform the necessary duties. 
she knows that this is the kind of behavior he wants from a woman so she can kick him kicks in and does the things she is sure will please him and it does eventually he'll pop the question except he really doesn't pop the question as much as the black woman makes the suggestion and leans on him until he agrees this short period in which the black woman makes heaven for the black man proves that she knows how but she does the right things for the wrong reasons. Her motivation is treachery and therefore short-lived. Her sometimes abrupt halt to the good treatment is a normal evolution to her, and she feels that he should, should have known what the deal was from the get-go. When the black man realizes he is not only being neglected, but nearly ignored, the good sister may go up, go to Nut City and appear baffled. She doesn't know what he means. Then she explains in great detail why things have changed. She sometimes gives him a choice between what duties he wishes to her to perform, since she cannot she can't do both. This is wrong. The black man has every right to expect and solicit the black woman to perform her wifely duties to him and the family. The black man and the family, including the house, must have first priority. The black woman, who believes themselves to be modern as to dismiss the home as a place to bathe and change, are suffering from a misunderstanding. The misunderstanding is that they must change with the trends instead of creating the trend that serves them best and protects the black nation. Any black woman who is not concerned with the black nation as a whole does not deserve to have a black man. The good wife syndrome. When the black woman starts out trying to do, the, do right, regarding her man, her home, and her family. She has a very difficult time with the personal anguish she suffers from the ridicule from other black women. They tease and mock her for trying to fulfill her rightful obligations to her family. If she works on a job outside of the home but still attempts to properly care for her family, she will be verbally assaulted and criticized for her efforts. Being a good wife is considered dull and outdated by the modern black woman. Other black women will tell the good wife, number one, you are a fool for working all day and cooking all night. He'll eat if he gets hungry. Number two, why don't you tell him to cook dinner? He gets home before you do. Number three, you're a fool to give him all of your money. You worked for it. You got a right to spend it on whatever you want to. Number four, I wouldn't take it. Number five, girl, you ain't his slave. Number six, why don't you go to this party with us this weekend? Number seven, it may be for some people, but it's not for me. I just ain't cut out for it. Number eight, God ain't me the man I do all that for. Number nine, you ought to just tell them that you ain't going to do it. Number ten, girl, I used to do that, but I got hip. Number eleven, you have to train a man to do what you want him to do. Number twelve, it's not fair for him to expect you to do all of that. The above 12 remarks are just a sample of what they say in front of her face. Behind her back, they whisper. Number one, that's the dumbest bitch I have ever seen. Number two, did you hear that shit? Number three, girl, I bet he's having big fun while she's stuck at home. 
Number four. I wonder what he's telling her. Number five. Did you see how he looks? Number six. He got her in a real trick bag. Number seven. I don't know how they do it. Number eight. I ain't working myself to death for nobody. Number nine. She don't have no idea what's happening. Number ten. I don't know how she can go for that. These are just samples. Some, of, some are more cutting than these. It is a travesty for black women to criticize other black women who are married and trying to be a good wife to their men. Being married and doing the right thing is looked upon as ignorant and old-timey. Black women make erroneous changes, charges against the righteous black woman who is trying to do her proper duty to her man, God, and her nation. She should not be mocked, but respected and admired for her good works. Any woman who deprives herself of the absolute thrill of serving and taking care of a black man is depriving herself of a special award. The look of peace and satisfaction on the content, contented face of a black man has no equal. There is no better heaven for the black man than to have his woman in order. A black man who has a supportive woman feels good to go out to work and his day is productive if he is at peace with his woman. The only way the black man can be at peace with the black woman is when she is doing what he wants her to do. A black man who sees his woman trying to please him will do everything he can to try to please her. He will make a good husband and father if given the chance. A man is proud of a good woman and a good home and it gives him the incentive and confidence to be successful no matter what the odds are out there. If he knows that when he comes home he has the tender touch and attention of his woman waiting for him. The black man is the only one who knows what it takes to make the black woman happy because she has no idea what real happiness is. But she is running so much in interference that the black man rarely gets a chance to be himself and release the love and trust he has because of the black woman's funky attitude. The black man cannot pattern his life in such a way to, as to have time or memory to constantly remind the black woman that he loves her. Love is not a sentence. It is a demonstration. If the black woman doubts that her man loves her, the doubt grows. It does not matter after that what the man tries to do or what he says she will remain unhappy a black woman who is relaxed at home cooking planning a loving welcome for her man making a dress or icing a cake is far happier than the black woman sitting at home alone under great duress waiting on the phone to ring trying to figure out how to find a man or chewing her nails off wondering where he is. There is no comparison if contentment and happiness is the goal. The black woman's natural instincts have become so polluted and distorted that she has rejected the plan that works for the one that fails. She is on the wrong path and insists on stumbling on is should be the black people's greatest collective hope that at some point the total total effect of the mind tampering during enslavement is understood the genetic psychological damage done to blacks in slavery has been forgotten 
as lightweight action that's over and past. It is much more serious and long lasting than that. It has caused the people to be morally estranged from their past. The black woman must be reminded of her duties and the black man must stop setting Settling for the jumbled ideas she has expressed. She must accept her basic ideas from the black man and improve on them instead of rejecting them in the name of having her own way. It has been proven that she does not know what she wants, nor how to get things she claims she does not does want. A big degree, a big job, a big car. And a big bank account does not compete with a big, beautiful black man. No way, no day. The black man has allowed himself to be devalued by black women who rank among the most confused species of humanhood on the place of, on a planet Earth. The black man knows that she is confused about many topics. And the black woman knows that he knows. But until she is stopped and called to order, she believes herself powerless to control how she is. Her first career must be to raising her family and completing the rearing work necessarily necessary to improve the black nation. This work cannot be done by anyone else no matter what they say they represent. Yes, Times are moving fast, it seems, and the black woman's previous steady and sturdy values have evaporated into the storm of American social politics. The black woman has attempted to grow and evolve like the white woman, except their history is not the same. The black woman's growth has been retarded and thwarted because she is trying to live her black life based on the values and standards of white life. She justifies all of this based on her anger towards the black man for not defending himself. It is entirely possible that hidden someplace in the black woman's psyche is the tremendous fury and loss of confidence in the black man because she, he was unaware to uh, he was, excuse me, because he was unable to protect her during slavery. Slavery robbed the black man of his natural right to provide and protect his family. Again, she doesn't know what he should have done to stop slavery, but she thinks he should have done something. Of course, there was nothing he could do. He felt as victimized as she, and his brain was equally wounded. The black woman's pain and frustration is so great that the only vent she pursues for, his, for release is to fight against the black man. The only man who really loves her, she battles tooth and nail in a fight that she cannot win. And one that destroys her spirit and makes her ugly to look at. It is difficult to, to get her to listen to new information about new approaches to living her life because she is so certain that she is justified in being out of order. She knows that she is difficult to tangle with because, but she thinks that this is what the black man deserves for being so out of order himself. Part of her discomfort is that she thinks that she thinks she has the solutions to the black man's problems and if he only listened to her by nature the black man cannot submit to the woman when she considers the problems of the black man she continually looks outward she lists oppression depression and obsession as part of his failings she compiles lists filled with such topics as joblessness Lack of political clout, lack of historical knowledge, poor education, missing father image, and a host of 
other external mishaps that re result in the black man being disenfranchised. It never occurs to her to look internally at, at herself and see what her role is in the black man's plight. If and when she does examine herself, she comes out clean. She can find no fallacy in her that helps keep the black man down. Confidentially, I'm sorry, confidentiality and trust. Black women reveal all of the black man's personal business to her friends. If the black man has any special information he tells his woman in confidence, you can be sure that her best friend or her family members know too. She takes a special glee in letting her friends know the most intimate details and secrets. Even, in, even his antics in bed and anything else of a personal and confidential nature, she does not consider the, black, the confidence has been violated, nor that it is unfair to the black man who entrusted her with the information. No black woman ever tells another black woman that she is wrong to tell her man's business to the public. This process is, a, is an agreed and acceptable dialogue among black women. It is also certain that some of the information she tells her girlfriends ends up getting whispered into the ears of her girlfriend's man. The black man is betrayed twice this way. His business is all over town and he doesn't even know it. She tells everything. Everything. No subject is too private or too sacred. Many black men think that the black woman is trust trustworthy with his innermost secrets, but it, she is not, and she expresses no guilt about it. She is the warp. Uh, she, she is the warped agreement between black women and part of their secret society with mutually agreed upon rules and bylaws. This is a woman-only club that thrives daily. The membership consists of single and married women. They all do the same thing. They tell. Whenever the black woman suspects that her black man has shared their business with another man or his family, she becomes appalled. How could he do such a thing? Black men who tell are looked down upon with special disdain. She thinks that a man is, not, is just not supposed to do this. She is a hypocrite. She, become, she has become so adept in atta at attacking the black man for whatever she decides is a good reason that she functions as if he is her open enemy and she packs an arsenal of ammunition to shoot him down at every turn. She is calculating every word he says and every move he makes, examining him to figure out ways to get him to do what she wants him to do. These constant calculations leave little time for positive discoveries to, of ways to drop her defenses and let her man lead the way. It is not easy for a black man to be motivated if his woman doubts him or if the, the relationship is so stormy that it takes his head and robs him of the ability to concentrate. For some, black, for some black man, his woman is the only thing wrong in his life. She has broken his spirit deep in his heart. Some have developed what appears to be a startling attitude about the black woman being out of order. They have started to accept her disagreeable behavior as the norm and cooperate with her ignorance because he does not think he has any alternative. 
So many black men have commenced to saying they want a black woman who is, number one, financially independent. Number two, her own person. Number three, can do things on her own and doesn't count on me for everything. Number four, who makes her own decisions. Number five, is a professional career woman. Number six, likes to have a good time without becoming attached. This is not what the black man really wants, but he sees no sense in swimming upstream against the apparent current if he wants to have a woman. It is obvious, it, it is obvious to him that the black woman wants a separate, independent life while claiming she wants peace and unity with the black man. It is impossible for those two aspirations to occupy the same space or to be targeted at the same object at one time. One cannot have separation and unity simultaneously. The real black man does not want a woman who professes any of the six aforementioned ideas. In his heart, he does not want this in his woman, but he is too convinced. But he too is convinced that this is the only option if he wants to be with her. And he has proven that he wants to be with her. On closer examination of the six postures of the new breed black woman, it is found that number one, financially independent black women make life easier on the black man because her wants and desires are so excessive and times are so difficult for a black man to earn enough money to support a wife and family that he generally agrees that it is a good idea if she has her own money. He doesn't have enough for himself. He would much rather be the breadwinner in charge of the money, but if he has a woman who makes outrageous demands on his wallet, he can't compete. He knows she will never be satisfied with his provisions and therefore gives up his rightful place as chief of finance and budget. Number two, her own person, means she demands total control of her own decision-making processes. It is part of her hard-earned independence. Anything he tells her to do or any advice he renders comes under careful scrutiny. Many times, the black woman will do the direct opposite of what the black man tells her to do just to prove him, just to prove to him that he can't boss her around. Repetitive rejection leaves him with no alternative but to stand back and let her be her own person, even if her own person is a fool. He watches her floundering about. Number three, quote, can do things on our own and doesn't count on me for everything, unquote. This includes her happiness. Since the black woman has proven by her behavior and responses that the black man doesn't know what to do to make her happy, he has nearly given up the desire to do so. He is faced with the mental torment of knowing she rejects his ideas, but that her ideas are impossible for him to execute and fulfill. So it is best if she counts on her own self for her own happiness. She calls it freedom of choice. The black man calls it saving himself from endless hassles and debates predictably ending with her having her way. Number four, quote, who makes her own decisions, end quote. The black man consents to allowing the black woman to make her own decisions. 
He has learned that if he persists in trying to convince her to follow his advice, he has to be prepared to argue it out for days. Or he can physically force his woman to submit. Physical, physical force is covered in another chapter. The black woman's loose and ruthless tongue eliminates the black man's alternatives. He cannot out-talk her unless she stops to listen. Therefore, he lets her have her way. A strange, thing's, a strange thing happens next. Every time the black woman wins an argument against the black man, she loses further confidence in his ability to handle her. Quote, unquote. Because she sees his acquiescence as weakness, all every black woman really wants is for her black man to tell her what to do, make her do it, and take charge of the situation. The black woman involuntarily wants to be overpowered by the black man, albeit she screams like a banshee while she, he's doing it. Don't believe her. This is just another contradiction in her ever-changing behavior. She wants to be conquered, and whenever she is conquered, she proudly brags to her friends about the conquest. She wants to lose, but when she pits her will against the will of the black man, and he gives in, she believes that if he can't handle her, then surely he cannot handle other outside forces that come against her. She first of all wants to be protected against herself. Number five. Quote, it is a professional career woman, end quote. This means she has some type of high class title and a job in some big business company. She dresses in a certain way and talks the language of whatever her job represents. The so-called corporate world, if it's not a black company, is the worst place for the black woman to be because she exhibits the internal conflict of trying to live the impression she gives on her job and live in the real world that exists for her at home or outside the workplace. She, in making a few dollars more than her often routine job holding counterparts, counterparts, the black man, is geared to compete. Sometimes the competition is so aggressive, she calls it assertive, that the black man experiences the antagonism of being defeated by the black woman in front of the white man. Her independence, strained from her salary and circle of friends, allow the black man the relaxation of not having to worry about her needs. She is on the same track as he, so he relieves himself of the challenge since by the measures she uses, she is equal. So this is just another situation which permits him to defer dealing with her personal problems due to her insistence on occupational and after work equality. He knows she will not let him infringe upon her highfalutin work decisions nor the ones she makes at home. So, the, so other than sex, he has no responsibilities for her. It's simpler. And she knows it. Number six. Likes to have a good time without becoming attached. Quote, unquote. Is prided by some black men because it too lets the him deal any kind of way he chooses. But avoid the responsibility of dealing with the fallout of the after effects. Black women allegedly have become more careful in their sexual involvements because of the AIDS and herpes scare. But this kind of sexual election only applies 
if it is a man she is not that fond of. If it is a man she likes and wants to see more of, she still gives up the sex or accepts the one night stand. Sometimes she does this because she too does not want to make a commitment or have to contend with anything else the black man has to offer than his body. Her total, her total statement gets reduced to what she transmit in bed. And after that, she may have no further use for him. Partying, going out, and sex are the only things a black man and a black woman can have if they do not commit to each other and try to build a lasting relationship. The black man who knows full and well these days that the black woman is filled to the brim with personal problems. Doesn't always feel like going through all the changes required of him to tame the woman. So they both agree to just participate in what they consider the good parts of the a relationship and dismiss, dismiss the other parts as just a way to bust a groove. These few surface points are made to demonstrate that the black man is in charge of the black woman. Anyway, it, anyway it's examined because it is he who opens the channels by his permission to allow her to do the, the to, excuse me, to allow her to do the things that she does. This is a mistake because a man can rise no higher than his woman. The woman in any civilization are indicative of the condition of the man. The black woman is only reflective of the black man's failure to do his job, which is to take charge of his woman. So if the black woman is troubled, so is he. No matter how he slices, sciences it up, that he doesn't have anything to do with it. Or that she won't give him permission to execute his will. She has lost her memory and she does not remember how to agree. End of chapter 4. Okay gang, I'm going to have a bonus chapter for you on this video. It's chapter 5. Social Integration, Dating and Marrying the White Man. The black woman will date and as reported daily, will marry a white man. She finds in her relationship with the white man perhaps the answer to all of her dreams and fantasies. First, he is removed from the black experience and brings a new set of rules to the involvement. Second, he represents the culmination of every movie and TV show she has ever seen featuring a gal gallant white beau who knows how to treat a woman and swoops in always coming to her rescue. Third, he is an alternative set of men whom she believes can be utilized because of the non-availability of black men. Now that there appears to be fewer black men, and she can't get along with any of them. She is pursuing other races to see what she can see. When the black woman gets with a white man, she may manufacture a complete new set of vials, which she uses to construct her new light and airy proper voice. She irresistibly becomes ever so amused by his jokes and pretends to like the things that he does. She becomes an actress of sorts and she relaxes a bit because the white man does not know the full story of her failure with the black man. Since the white man does not know the ins and outs of black intimacy, he is more tolerant of her and they both enjoy the novelty. She can wear as much makeup as she desires, and to the white man, this is normal. While the black woman is known to ignore a black man on the street corner, in an elevator, or on the subway, she seems always 
ready with an eager, appealing smile when a white man, especially one in a suit and tie, tries to make light conversation with her. She appears to be flattered and falls into her crisp, bright personality. Her smile is sometimes so instant, it looks like a flash of sparkling white snow, blushing and appreciative. If she decides to date him later on, she is seen to be overly affectionate in public. There may be hugging, provocative kissing, or fondling in public. She is willing to ignore many of the white men's shortcomings regarding wardrobe, excuse me, regarding wardrobe, language, hipness, music, car, or, or job. She convinces herself that he is normal and she must accept him as he is. And above all, he's just another man. When she is with him, she thinks she is finally free. Free of the black man's hassles and free of her own history. She is proud of him in front of her family and friends or on the other extreme. She knows that her social integration relationship will not be accepted. So she keeps it a secret. He is considered special to her and automatically, quote, knows how to treat a woman, end quote. Certainly, certainly better than a black man does, she thinks. She might be willing to fight for him, endure insults and stares just to be with him. And she defends her right to love a white man. She says she is not prejudiced and falls back on the same explanation that the black man has adopted. That her particular white man had nothing to do with slavery. That was before his time. She feels no guilt in being a traitor to the black man by accepting another race over him. She sees guilt as an outdated hangover, which has no business in her modern, quote, do what I want to do, end quote, system. Loyalty to the black man appears to her as static, sentimentally wrapped in shredded ribbons, and the glitter is all gone. Worn out from the endless dis disagreements. She believes she has tried in every way possible to be with the black man, and each time he fails. And it's, and it's all his fault. To just stay with a black man because he is her natural mate is absurd to her, and as her history has proven, counterproductive. Even worse, the black man is irritating to her. He just won't do right. She is unwilling to accept a new approach and allows nothing to cloud her fine perceptions. She refuses to be governed by an obsolete set of standards that imply unselfish conduct and actions made only if they benefit the black nation. That's fine for the public, but in her private affairs, she is coldly analytical about what she wants personally, and in that area is oddly detached from her people. As a last resort, she may explain, quote, it just happened, end quote. Nothing just happens. There is an explanation for everything. Even if the explanation is not immediately immediately known, it can be explained, and it is not new. The black woman believes that she has reached the ultimate pinnacle of personal development achievement when she arrives at the point of seriously considering dating a white man. She pretends to herself that his color does not matter. And to her, it doesn't. For her to pick a white man as her mate only demonstrates further her disdain for the black man and her decision to not take it anymore. The white man can give her new options, 
new freedom, and new notoriety. She finally gets her opportunity to play like she is the kind of glamorous white girl she has seen on TV and in the movies all of her life. And if watched closely, she can be seen acting out the mannerisms of, a, of white women. She has absolutely forgiven the white man for enslaving her people. And the white man has forgiven himself for enslaving black people. But the poor black woman has not forgiven herself for being a slave. Her spirit was broken during that time. And the genetic psychological damage she suffered has never been addressed or healed. Her suffering was internalized and transmitted through fear and anxiety. And it was the fear that resulted in her current insecurity in the black man. She does not believe that she can count on the black man to protect her and her babies. She views the black man as weak and powerless in her world and easily manipulated. She despises him for his so-called, quote, big ego, end quote, and does everything she can to tear him down and make him forget that idea. She has never dealt with her attitude about refusing to allow the black man to bask in the pride of having a big ego. She does not want him to think, of, think well of himself because she doesn't, does not think well of herself. She wants him to believe that he is unworthy. She has no idea what it would feel like to agree with a black man about his big ego. She might like it. She does not want to agree with him that he is great. Instead, she chooses to take the white sociologist's alleged research that reveals the bulk of the black man as still shiftless, uneducated, and plain lazy. She, think, she thinks he wastes, wastes time trying to do the impossible things, and that his and that his goals are misdirected and futile. Believing this, it is not difficult for her to renege on the men in her own nation and try to fit in to the race of another. And she is much more tolerant and patient with Caucasians of any age, of, excuse me, of every age. It is most convenient for her to believe that there is a shortage of black men. Hopefully, there will continue to be a shortage, shortage of the type of wimpy, fearful black men she is looking for to control. Since she, cannot, she, since she can't have the kind of black man she can rule, she is now pleading for social empowerment. She wants authorized governmental permission to achieve and be strong. Stronger than the black man. She has turned the process of personal growth into a social activity instead of spiritual commitment. The empowerment she seeks is really the right to devour the remaining black men who have refused to submit to her. Dating and marrying the white man is another flimsy excuse used to get out of the inevitable, submitting to the black man. Her new political idea of empowerment gobbles up and eliminates the rules that give the black man superiority and the black nation longevity. In, in, in interracial dating, she follows the white woman's liber liberation trend in almost biblical divine adherence. She is determined to stay right up on it politically and socially. She wants special rights that will approve of her wrong behavior against the black man. Her violent swaths against the black man's right to live the way he wants to. To are frequently, especially when looking back and comparing her new relationship with a white man to her old failed relationship with black men. 
Many black men do not like it when they see a black woman pretending to be so happy and content with a white man. But the mountain looks too high and the river too long and wide for him to cross over and correct her. He has had no one to publicly agree with him about the deplorable behavior of the black woman. It seems that black women and white America are in cahoots with each other against the black man. This is not the way it's supposed to be. The few converted black women who know their place and respect the black man as the head of the house, as the head are few and quiet he has needed a louder supporting voice one filled with brightness and resounding echo of pure truth one outcry in the darkness announcing announcing before all of the world that he is right and he is good will will and he is good will help him rise certainly the white man's free state of mind open approach to things appear more attractive to her but the white man has never been a slave a few cases of indentured servitude did not impact on the psyche of the white male in a destructive way as the full slavery impacted upon the black man. So the black man appears outclassed when compared to him. The black man's accomplishments over trillions and trillions of years should not be compared to the measure of success the white man has set in America. There are, there are more non-white black people on the earth than white people. The white race is not the pace setter and neither is the black woman. They are both they are they are both the pace followers. The black woman who does not study or value history does not realize that the time she is living in now is not the sum total of the time that she and the black man has inhabited the earth. Her mega generations have existed long before 2,000, 4,000, or 6,000 years ago. 6,000 years are but a drop in the bucket when compared to the time that the black man has walked the earth in peace. She has allowed her part to become remote and irrelevant. The black woman sees the black man integrating too. She witnesses, she witnesses him dating and marrying the white woman. So she considers her part of the contribution to the 5,000 black women who date and marry white men as, as small significance. And others of them complain that the black man is with the white woman because she is easier to get along with or that she gives him better sex, or that she respects him more. She doesn't know that he is with her for one reason and one reason only. He is with her because she gives him peace. However it is described, the end, of, the end result he sees for himself is peace. Of course, there are a few who claim they are with the white woman because they are getting back at the white man or that they want to possess her because they were denied her. These are all flimsy and flaky excuses for not being familiar with the word peace. Certainly not all cases are the same, but each race has behavioral traits that cannot be classified as stereotyping due to the incidents that have occurred in their evolution into who we see today. This is referred to as the nature of something or someone. It is not possible for a black woman to be happy trying to be a woman with a white man. Their natures are completely different. Certain black women who do not like the black woman being with a white man know for an actual fact that this is the same rule applies to black men who are trying to be be a man 
to the white woman. It is pitifully unfortunate that the black woman believes that she can have a better life with a white man than she can have with a black one. The truth, the truth be told, any black woman can have a man. Any black woman can have any man she chooses. Of course, her requirements will have to be adjusted and she will have to qualify to get one. The qualifications are standard, routine, and in necessity. She will have to unquestionably submit herself to be ruled by the black man. She will have to allow him to be the boss. No black man turns down a good woman. It has nothing to do with how she looks, how she dresses, or otherwise. All of it has to do with how the black woman behaves and how much respect and care she gives the black man. A good, a good woman does not have a special physical profile. When the black man finds a good woman whose nature is attracted to, he, he will remain with her forever. Maybe not just her alone, but he will include her in his life. And what the black woman wants is to be included in the life of the black man. As soon as she realizes that she can have a black man, but not on her terms, she will have one. When she reaches this level of understanding, she will not even consider dating or marrying the white man. And she certainly will not participate in the American conversational habit of publicly criticizing her man. When the black woman attacks the black man publicly, she inadvertently gives the entire world permission to attack him also. Because everyone knows that a man's woman knows him better than anyone else. And if she says he ain't nothing, he's not. End of chapter 5.